Hi, it's Eric from Axis. Today we're going to talk about surface machining with a Mastercam Mill 1 license, or 2D license as it's commonly called. On your screen you should see a solid model, a little bit different than the wireframe a lot of you 2D guys see every day. Can I machine this with my license? Absolutely. Let's start working through the process. First things first, let's do a little bit of geometry interrogation. I'm going to hit my statistics button and it says I have one solid and four lines. From there we're going to move up to our dynamic analyze and we're going to be looking at some radiuses. If I select the face of the uh, radius it's going to come in and it's going to give me, amongst other things, my radius size. We'll move on again using the dynamic to checking for draft. In this case I'm looking to see if there's any draft on that wall. There was none, so it showed me that there was zero draft. We'll now move into our stock setup. As you can see this is a pretty good sized piece of steel. We'll jump right into our tool paths. Mastercam mill one license for a couple releases now have included the Opti rough cutter path. It's a really good rougher. Matter of fact, it's probably the best choice in roughers inside a master camp at this point. So let's select our geometry. I'm going to set my wall stock and floor stock to leave 20 thousandths. I'm going to go into my tool path control. I'm going to use automatic boundary set to silhouette. My strategy is to bring the cutter in from the outside and I'm going to turn skip pockets off. The cutter I'm going to use is going to be an inserted one inch mill bull end mill with a 62 thousandths radius. I'm going to set my spindle speed, my feed rate, and my plunge rate at this point. My machine needs a length offset and diameter offset to be qualified same as the tool, so I will set these now. I'm going to go into my cut parameters because I'm stepping down less because of the carbide insert. I'm going to set my step over more. I'm going to change my step down to the radius of the insert, which was 62 thousandths, and turn off the step up. I'm going to go to my linking parameters. I'm going to look for my clearance retract plane. It's going to be an absolute value of 2 inches. I'm going to pull a full vertical retract. That means my cutter is going to go straight up every time and everything else I'm going to leave where it is. I'm going to go into my arc filter and tolerance and I'm going to open up my cut tolerance a little bit because I am roughing and I'm going to activate my line arc filter settings and set my cut tolerance to 80%. Moving on to my planes button, I'm going to go to my work offset, set it to G54 which is zero and then I'm going to get a window pop-up that's going to say, do you want to update this plane? And I'm going to select yes. Hit the green check. And I've calculated the cutter path. Surface machining for guys that do a lot of 2D machining is a lot different. Notice a lot of work gets done very, very rapidly. All right, on to the next. Let's talk about the surface cutter paths that you get in a Mastercam L1. Everything under the 3D drop-down, other than OptiRough, is available in a one tool path, or a one surface tool path, meaning it'll cut one surface at a time. OptiRough will do multiple surfaces. However, there are cutter paths behind the operations manager that will allow you to machine more than one surface at a time with Mastercam. We're going to explore some of those. First, let's fill our hole. We're going to go to Surfaces and use the Fill Hole function. Make sure we put it on a different level because we have to turn it off at one time. Now we're going to go in and do a semi-finished cutter pass. We're going to go to Mill Tool Pass, Surface Finish, and then Multi-Surface Parallel. We're going to select all of our geometry again. And this time we're going to have to qualify a containment boundary and we're going to use the four lines that are included in that model. We went in and did our research in our geometry interrogation and we're going to 
decided that we could use a 5 8 ball, so we're going to select that. We're going to set our speeds and feeds a little bit differently this time. Instead of just punching in a number, we're going to set our surface foot. In this case, 600 and a feed per tooth. Master Cam will update speeds and feeds based off of that. Still have to hit your plunge rate manually. We're going to set stock to leave. In this case, for a semi finish, we're going to leave a little bit of stock. Set our machining angle. We're going to turn on our gap settings and we're going to make our transitions as smooth. We'll hit the green check and we're going to go out and create the cutter path. A nice semi finished cutter path. No lifts, one in, one out. Works pretty good. We're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of redoing the whole cutter path, we're going to copy this cutter path and paste it below. We're going to use, make some tweaks to it as turn it into a finisher. I'm going to reverse the cutter path coming back the opposite direction. I'm going to set my step over based on a finish that I desire. In this case, I'm going to say 1 tenth. Master cam updates based off of my wants. I'm going to come in readjust my stock to leave back into my parameters we're going to use the same cutter we're going to review our plane settings again a little bit different place but it's still there and we're going to come back and machine that cutter path so we've roughed semi-finished and finished it leaves us with one more cutter path to cut you can take a look at the finish it's Pretty, pretty fine for a step over on a block that large. So we're going to go turn off the surface we created and now we're going to focus on the pocket that's left. You know what? Because it's straight up and down, I think I'm going to use an area mill. 2D cutter path. I'm going to use automatic area. Select the solid face. I'm going to preview the chain. Go grab another cutter. In this case, I think I'm going to use a half inch bullnose end mill. Speeds and feeds, length offsets all have to be set. I'm going to adjust my stock to leave on walls and stock to leave on floors. We'll turn on my depth cuts. I'm going to add a couple of finish cuts because I'm cutting right to zero. Linking parameters. I'm going to turn my depth to zero incremental because we chose that service. I'm going to even out my top of stock to zero, zero. It can be absolute or incremental in this case. Set a feed plane that makes sense and make sure my retract is above. Uh, because we are starting over steel, we're going to have to figure out an entry method. We'll use a helix but we have to adjust our radius of that helix to fit our cutter. Also, I'm going to change my plunge angle to one degree. I'm going to tighten up my cut tolerance and turn on my line arc filter settings. Double check to make sure my work offset is where it is. And there's our pocket cutter path. So we've manufactured this part with four cutter paths. Let's run it through verify and see if indeed we got what we expected. And there's our roughing. That's the opti rough. For my 2D guys, surface machining allows us to do a lot of a lot of complex shapes without a lot of work. Could we have done this in wireframe? Absolutely. There'd be a lot more cutter paths, though. There's our finish strategy and our pocket strategy. And there's your part. Now, Let's go in and let's send this to the machine, or let's post some G-code for it at any rate. 
So we're going to hit our G1, make sure all four or toolpath group one is selected. Post our part, give it a name. I, I like to send everything to my NC folder. I like to use a code expert for a post or G code reader, if you will. Some guys call it a post. Guys, once your G code is posted, take a second, review it. I'm just kind of skimming through it for this video, but spend some time, make sure things are working right. Go to your setup sheet. I'll give it a name. I'm going to call it Advanced 2D. I like to use the MIL2 setup sheet inside of MasterCAD included with MasterCAM. It's a lot shorter. Basically gives you a setup, um, cycle time, and cutters that you used, and minimum, maximum Z. Pretty much everything you need without a lot of the extras. I'll save it as a PDF, and when I send the file out to the floor, what I'll do is I'll send the setup sheet and the NC file together. And I'll keep them together in case we ever have to run this job again. I won't have to come in and program it. And that's about all there is to it, guys. Thank you so much for watching.